Okay, chapter 7, section 12, isentropic efficiencies of steady flow devices. Okay, so we've been talking about entropy uh, all this chapter, and we've talked about isentropic processes. Isentropic processes, you know, where entropy is constant. Uh, if it's isentropic, and let me put them in parentheses, and adiabatic, uh, then it would be reversible. And so the isentropic, if we had an isentropic turbine, that would be the best, right? If we had an isentropic compressor, an isentropic nozzle, if we had any of these isentropic steady flow devices that we had talked about in chapter 5, those would be the best or the ideal uh, devices, the model that we can shoot for. We won't, won't quite get there, but the isentropic devices are the best. So we want to say... How does our actual device compare to the isentropic? How does the actual device we have compare to the isentropic? And so that's, uh, that's what isentropic efficiency is. How close is it to the best? All right. So when we talk about efficiencies, uh, sometimes we usually think of, you know, one is purely efficient. Um, but everything is going to be less than one hour efficiency. You know, is it 0.87, you know, 87% efficient? Is it 87% uh, uh, closest to the isentropic process? So if we want an efficiency that's less than one, let's think about a number of these different steady flow devices and how we can kind of come up with an efficiency rating. So half of it is filled out here for you. So turbines. All right, turbines are, you know, if, if we put it in a stream, if we put it in a fluid that is rotating the turbine, and we're getting work out of the turbine, right? We're getting work out of the turbine from the fluid. So uh, less than one, you know, an isentropic would be, turbine would be best. We would get the most work out of that as possible. The actual turbine, we're not going to get quite as much work out of it so do you see, that's why we're going to have work actual divided by work if it was isentropic. All right, so that's our efficiency. And for turbines that have no Q, uh, the work actual over work isentropic are the enthalpies, the change in enthalpy, H1 minus H2 actual over H1 minus H2 uh, isentropic. All right, so let's let's talk about this. You know, yeah, we might have an m dot on top and m dot on bottom that uh, cancels each other out because it's a steady flow device. It's a turbine, one inlet, one outlet. Uh, so it's really the change in H, uh, the change in H. Um, generally, for turbines, the um, initial is larger than the final H. So these subscripts, this is this is the this is what the enthalpy is actually at state two, you know, at the outlet of the turbine. This right here is what the enthalpy is at state two if it was isentropic. So it's almost like we have to do two different problems, almost kind of side by side, or, you know, we think about, okay, here's the actual process. All right, what would its H be? Let me calculate it. All right, but then also, hey, this is isentropic. What would its H be? And so then it's kind of a, a problem that we've done previously in Chapter 7. If, if I tell you, hey, this is isentropic, then um, what is the H? We could find that a number of different ways. Sometimes it might be looking at the steam tables, you know, if it's steam or refrigerant. Maybe looking at the refrigerant tables and knowing the S that it starts at and saying, okay, well, it's going to end at that same S, that same entropy. Um, sometimes it's an ideal gas. We just we just had a section on ideal gases. Ideal gases, if it's isentropic, then maybe you go back and we do the uh, PR. You know this, yeah, this 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 thing. The f take the temperature, find the reduced the relative pressure and then convert that to the relative pressure 2 and find the temperature 2 and then use that. Um, so sometimes it's this uh, process, sometimes it's uh, this process, but ideal gases, uh, if it's isentropic, 
then that that's kind of a whole problem itself. So sometimes it's like one whole problem is the actual, one whole problem is the isentropic, and if we do both of those, then we can calculate the efficiency. Okay, so for turbine, the efficiency, the isentropic efficiency of the turbine is H1 minus H2 actual over H1 minus H2 isentropic. Uh, compressors, compressors, kind of like turbines except backwards, we have to put work in in order to turn those blades of the uh, compressor or fan. Uh, and so with that one, we're having to put work in. If it was a really, really good compressor, we wouldn't have to put too much work in. Uh, ours isn't so good. We're having to put a lot of work in in order to, in order to make it um, move that fluid. So with this one, the isentropic work is going to be less than the actual work. That's why we have it on top, just so that all of our, in, all of our efficiencies are less than one. So here, uh, very similar to the turbine, but this is going to be H2S minus H initial over H2 actual minus H initial, right? So this is the enthalpy at the second state. If it was isentropic, this is the enthalpy of the second state, what it actually is. Okay, and that will give us the efficiency, the isentropic efficiency. How close is this to an isentropic process? Uh, for a pump, uh, let's see, the kind of work isentropic for a pump is V, lowercase v, uh, P2 minus P1 over uh, H2 actual minus H1. So, so another equation is kind of similar. Mm, uh, instead of the H isentropic over H1 minus H1, we, we change that to V P2 minus P1. Then the last steady flow device we'll look at are nozzles. Right, nozzles were kind of speeding up the flow, right? Nozzles were speeding up the flow. So if it was really good, then it would speed it up really well. Uh, that's why we've got this down here at the bottom. And so this is not just V2S, uh, but it's V2S squared, right? The, the actual, uh, sorry, that's the velocity at the exit. We say kinetic energy, but instead of one half m v squared on top and bottom, the one halves cancel out, the m's cancel out, so it's v uh, 2 actual squared over v 2 isentropic squared, right, v 2 actual over v 2 isentropic. Uh, if velocity initial is close to zero, then I've got this as h one minus H2 actual over H1 minus H2S, just like the uh, turbine. But uh, also have a note here, look at conservation of energy. Uh, and actually, uh, for all these problems, sometimes we have two conservation of energy equations, right? Uh, the actual conservation of energy equation that has work actual, kinetic energy actual, H actual, you know, H2 actual, might maybe in that steady flow uh, equation. But then we also have sometimes the um, conservation of energy if it was isentropic. So the work if it was isentropic, the H if it is isentropic, um, you know, the velocity, if we've got kinetic energy, the velocity if it was isentropic. Uh, so sometimes for these problems, don't forget about the conservation of energy equation. Don't forget about the conservation of energy equation. We've got to remember all, we've got to go back to chapter five and remember how to do steady flow devices because now it's almost like we're doing two steady flow devices, the actual steady flow device and the isentropic steady flow device. Okay, I think that's enough notes. Let's uh, put it into practice and work out some problems, okay?